Hi, right, it's time for the math easy solution to discuss another video on converting inverse hyperbolic trig functions to logarithms. They're basically, uh, and basically go over in today's video inverse hyperbolic cosine of x and show that it equals to uh, natural log of um, or ln of x plus square root x squared minus one right here and the domain is basically for x is greater than equal to one right here. Uh, first I'll make a note, I made a bunch of uh, other videos on inverse hyperbolic functions, inverse functions and other stuff related to this video. So make sure to watch those in the video links below if you need to catch up on inverse functions, etc. So now uh, the first the first step that I want to go over in, in showing that this is equal to a logarithm is first graphing out this function right here. The, this is the blue, this equals to this, and this is just another way of writing, or, or this is just a definition of inverse, uh, I mean of, of hyperbolic cosine of x, not the inverse of it. This, then this just equals to e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by 2. That's just... Uh, writing it out and using using Google Graphing Calculator. Now I also have graphed the equation y equals x. That's this red right here. And also the inverse that uh, Google uses, and also my calculus book uses. Because number inverse, it based on what you select as the function right here. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I wrote it. Uh, I drew the logarithmic out here because I didn't know how to write inverse hyperbolic cosine of x in Google Graphing Calculator. I wasn't graphing it, so let's put this uh, in here. But anyway, so this is our inverse hyperbolic cosine of x function. So what I mean by this is, like I showed in my earlier video on one-to-one -one functions, this uh, any inverse function is a is a perfect reflection or mirror image off of the y equals x line right here. So this parabola, which is our, it looks like a parabola. So this shape right here will reflect if we reflect it. It directly across to this line, it's going to be look. It's going to look on this side, and then it will go something like this. But the, the fact is, uh, when we have a function like this, we'll have let's say if we have one x value right here, we'll have a line going up and down, which this is our y one and this is our y two. So we'll have two value, two values of y for one value of x, and we can't have that. Can't have that, and we have to select a range to invert, basically inverse. And and usually most people do the, make it look like this, and that's by making by only l converting this side uh, of the parabola right here and flipping it over. So we'll have it over here. So we'll have this function right here, and then for one value of x, obviously we're just gonna get one value of y instead of going down to get two. And now this one here, the domain is obviously x is greater than or equal to one right here. And another note is that our y is basically greater than or equal to zero now because it's only going to be greater than or equal to zero that we're not looking at the negative of it and and we're only looking to the right of this or the top of this one right here this is y is greater than or equal to one now we're going to have x greater than or equal to one so now that we've got over the domain and range which we will use in the proof now let's just write y equals two yeah inverse hyperbolic cosine of x right here now this is the exact same thing as writing x equals to uh, hyperbolic cosine of x, I mean of y right here. This is just by definition of an inverse function, we just replace x and y of this, and that is what inverse means. So now we could also write this as a definition, x equals to e to the y uh, plus e to the negative y all divided by two. So now we have this one right here, and now, uh, but now we're dealing with y instead, because that's a function of y. So now we, if we multiply the two out, so get, we'll get uh, basically 2x is equal to e to the y plus e to the negative y. So when we have this, I'm, I'm just gonna keep writing this. I'm gonna make it look like a quadratic formula, which is pretty uh, interesting, pretty clever right here. So that my calculus book goes over. So we subtract 2x from both sides, negative 2x, so we get zero is equal to e to the y minus 2x plus e to the negative y right here. So we have this. And now what we could do is multiply both sides by e to the y, e to the y and this. It's not going to change anything. It's still going to be 0 on the left. So 0, now we're going to have e 2y minus 2x times e to the y plus e to the negative y times e to the y. But now on this part right here, if we write it, uh, this part right here is just equal to, if you add up the powers, that's 
basically the proper with, with power rule fun with power functions we just properties is you just add up the powers of the same base which is e and this equals to uh, this is e to negative y plus y that's a zero and e to the zero is one you can see more on this in the video links below so now we have that and also we could write this as zero is equal to e to the y to the power of two so just take the two out just to make it look like a quadratic function now minus two x e to the y I'll put this in a bracket as well just to uh, make it more uh, clear so now plus one that's going to be right here that's this one right here so now this is actually just a quadratic fo a formula of, uh, we could apply a quadratic form to find e to the y because this is a quadratic function but in terms of e to the y instead of x so what we could do here is apply the quadratic formula and the quadratic formula basically states if you have a function like this 0 equals a to the x squared plus bx plus c then the x you could solve it is going to be negative b plus minus squared b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a and you can see proof of this also in the video links uh, below right here so now but the difference is with this function our x is now basically written as e to the y so now that instead of x we're dealing with e to the y and now our a is going to be equal to in, in front of this e to the y is just nothing there so we just put one and our b is equal to this negative 2x and our c is also equal to 1 that's just this one right here that's the c there's the b there's the a etc so now we just apply the formula to solve for it we get so we'll get e to the y equals negative 2 negative of a negative 2x that's going to be positive 2x and now plus or minus square root b squared which is negative 2x squared which is 4x squared and now we subtract 4 multiplying 4 by a which is 1 and c which is 1 so it's not going to affect it so we just leave it there all divided by 2 times a which is 1 so just leave that there and now also uh, this part right here we could simplify this further uh, by factoring the 4 out so we'll have 4x squared minus 1 all square root and now this square root also uh, if we square root the 4 out will be 2 square root x squared minus 1 so I wrote that just so that we could simplify this further. So it will be 2x plus or minus 2 square root x squared minus 1 right here, all divided by 2. And now what we could do is basically divide out the 2 and cancel it out. So we'll have e to the y is equal to x plus or minus square root x squared minus 1 right here. But now we have two answers, plus and minus, but we now we have to use our domain. We know that like I showed above yeah what I showed above here y is greater than or equal to zero and x is greater than or equal to one right here yeah so we just if we apply that let's say y is greater than or equal to zero then basically e to the y is going to be greater than or equal to well e to the zero right here which is equal to one so e to the y has to be greater than or equal to one and our, our x is greater than or equal to 1 right here. So the smallest value, uh, yes, yeah, so basically when we have something like this, we know that x, yeah, we know basically if, if we let x equals to 1, then the smallest value here will have 1 plus or minus, uh, uh, basically square root 1 minus 1. That's just going to be, well, this can be 0, so it's going to be equal to 1. So initially it's separated by 1. But then as you increase, let's say x is equal uh, to, let's say, 99, now you're going to be basically having a 99 minus or plus or minus uh, 99 squared minus 1. So this 1 is becoming insignificant right here, and it's basically similar to uh, just square root of 99 right here. Square not just equals to 99 right here. This is squared, uh, I mean 99. So this is approaching uh, our zero right here. So our e to the y would approach zero. Yeah, approach zero if, uh, so because we're not allowed to make it zero, if we use the minus sign right here. So this minus sign, we cannot apply it, because even if we look at the graph of x, so this is y equals x, and this is our square root x squared minus one. So then as you can see, uh, it's difference of one right here, but now, and also there's a difference of one here. But now as you get, as you go uh, further and further out, this is approaching zero right here. So yeah, it, the difference right here is approaching zero.
but we can't have it approach zero so we have to only choose the positive sign because there's two right here so x minus uh, square root x minus one approaches zero as x uh, goes bigger and also it's always going to be less than our one right here but we know that e to the one is great I mean e to the y is greater than one so we only select the plus the plus is the only thing that ap applies right here is anything greater than x equals to one will have a less will have a smaller value than um, than one right here which we can't have by this this e to the y which is greater than or equal to one so from this we know that e to the y is equal to x plus and not a negative so we can't have the negative of x squared minus one so now that we have this we get ln both sides and th this one is yeah basically ln both sides we're not changing anything because we're doing both and then using our log rules or properties we could bring down the y so then it will be at y times ln e and this just equals to one so this is equals to y that's just by uh, law some further log rules and now this equals to our ln x plus square root x minus one right here and basically and the domain is x is greater than or equal to one uh, like I showed above so anyways that's all for it this is basically our proof that the hyperbolic cosine number y is equal to inverse hyperbolic cosine of x right here equals to y not equals to this and this is the proof that you can write this as a logarithm anyways that's all for today hopefully you'll learn from this video this proof video and uh, thanks for watching and basically remember you can always download these exact notes in the Dropbox links below and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.